Hi, this is Roger from Cankerlips. Today with the start of a new unlimited video series about precision op-amp design or designing precision circuits with op-amps. And I came to this idea during the repair of this total harmonic distortion meter. During the repair I took a close look at the circuit topology and I had some ideas how to improve the circuit and because there are so many concepts um, used here in precision op-amp design I thought well let's perhaps make a little video series out of that because I've designed a few dozen circuits with op-amps and uh, this will not be an op-amp primer, so you should have at least a basic knowledge of how the inverting and the non-inverting amplifier with an op-amp works and how the Im impedance of a capacitor is calculated. But that's nearly all, so we don't, we don't start at the very basics and we won't go into the high-end topics, um, but just uh, the topics where a lot of pitfalls um, for designers are waiting for you. So let's uh, just start and take a look at the block diagram of this circuit and then go step by step. So as you can see we have basically eight different building blocks. Seven of them are op-amp stages with different topology. An input buffer, an amplifier, an inverting amplifier, the notch filter which is uh, made as an active filter, again a non-inverting amplifier, a filter, an AC to DC converter and finally, which is not an op-amp or a direct op-amp circuit, the multimeter IC. And so today we'll only talk about here this little input buffer and see what we can learn about it, how to design it and perhaps how to improve the original circuit. Now as you can see I've already written down the op-amps they have used here. It are all in all four different types, the NE5534, the TL081, the MC1458, yeah four of them. And um, so here we have given op-amps um, but we'll also talk about the choice of the right op-amp and we'll analyze if the op-amps the original designers choose here for the individual building blocks, if they are really optimum. And so let's start here with the NE5534 and the input stage and the input buffer. So, but before that we should first of all set our specifications for this 0.01% accuracy total harmonic distortion meter. Now here is also the first number for our specs um, because we always measure relative to a adjustable 100% value um, which is the fundamental tone. We have a dynamic range of 100% in relation as the maximum or the what we set our relative value to to 0.01% least significant digit and this is a ratio of 1 in 10,000 and this translates, uh, if we calculate this in dB, uh, this is nothing else but 80 dB dynamic range. And because all of our circuitry should of course be better, so when we want our least significant digit to be accurate, we have to take care that all circuit details are better than 80 dB. For example, the distortion 
from our op amps may of course be much less than the least significant digit. Uh, so it should be at least three times better. And that is not only for a single op amp, that is for the whole chain of op amps. And this translates to around 90 dB. So this translates to that all the harmonics from the op amp should be less than 90 dB below the fundam fundamental tone. Next is our frequency response. Now because this is an audio device, uh, we already know the upper limit is usually 20 kHz, but what is the lower limit? Well, in this special measurement device we only take a 1 kHz sine wave uh, as the reference signal, so we don't need anything below 1 kHz, so the frequency response must be flat from 1 kHz up to 20 kHz, because the highest harmonic we want to measure is the 20th harmonics at 20 kilohertz. Anything above that won't have any significance uh, because you can't hear it anymore. And how good should the flatness be in this range? Well, it should not be only as you usually find in audio specifications 1 dB because 1 dB already is 10%, uh, so this should be better or should be flat to 0.1 dB. So we don't want any deviation from flatness greater than 0.1 dB because this translates to a 1% accuracy. So what is the DC accuracy? Well, none at all, because we only measure AC voltages. We don't need any DC precision. So because uh, DC accuracy only becomes important in or behind the AC to DC converter, we will not deal with that now at the moment. But it of course becomes important later. And then of course there is the effect of offset voltages which could be amplified in the first stages that much that perhaps one of the op amps could get into saturation. So we cannot leave this totally out of consideration even in the first only AC coupled stages. Now what next do we have? Um, we have to define an input voltage range because we want to measure as well pre-amplifiers and power amplifiers. Now at pre-amplifiers we could get away always with a sensitivity of 100 millivolts RMS. But what is the highest input voltage you get from a power amplifier? Well, simple calculation with Ohm's law of power. Well, first of all the equation for that is that the RMS voltage is the square root of the power times the resistor. Now if we have, if we say let's get away with a maximum of 200 watts at an 8 ohms imp loudspeaker impedance, this translates to 200 times 8 and the square root of that is 50, uh, 40 volts RMS and of course that gives a peak value of times the square root of that and that gives 56, let's round it up to 60 volt. So we have quite a substantial 
uh, input voltage range from 100 millivolts RMS, that's the lower end, up to 40 volts RMS, which translates to 60 volt peak. And next is the supply voltage. Because we don't have a battery operated, but a mains transformer operated device, we don't need single supply op amp design. We say we'll supply our op amps with plus minus 12 volts. That's what they choose for the device I was uh, speaking of. Next is we set a kind of R arbitrary reference level for the 100% which which of course must be adjustable with an attenuator or an amplifier depending on if our input voltage is smaller than our set reference level or if it's larger. Well, let's say we put that at 1 volt RMS which is 1.4 volts peak or 2.8 volts peak peak. Uh, that, that is because this is most often used in audio application as a reference level. And now we finally know if our not only our distortion but also our noise must be 90 dB at minimum 90 dB less than all our levels in our op amp stages. So the noise also has to be smaller than 90 dB but always in relation to our reference level present at the different op amp stages. So for example if we have an op amp stage where we have exactly this reference level, our noise has to be 90 dB below 1 volts RMS. 90 dB is a factor of 30,000. So we simply divide 1 volts by 30,000 and get 333. Let's round it to smaller than 300 microvolts at 1 volt RMS. But this depends on the stage where you just are if you're at the stage where your, your reference voltage or your reference level is still here at the 100 millivolt level, so the lowest we want to measure, then this is only 30 microvolts, which the noise has to be at maximum. So th these are basically our specs and now we already see the first problem we have. When our supply voltage is plus minus for our op amps, plus minus 12 volts, then even if the op amp would be a rail to rail type, which it is not in our case, so let's safely say our maximum input voltage is plus minus 10 volt, but we know that uh, from a power amplifier we can get plus minus 60 volts. Hmm. We have to insert first of all an attenuator and second we need some input protection for our op amp because if we accidentally put our input signal at full level from a power amplifier directly to the inputs of our op amp it certainly will be destroyed and that's just the first thing we deal with, op-amp input protection.